Light travels at the speed of three times ten to the eighth meters per second in vacuum. Its speed is slower in any other medium. We define this thing called the index of refraction of a medium to be c over v. This n is the index of refraction, and the v is the speed of light in the medium. Because the speed of light in any medium cannot be faster than c, n can never be smaller than one. Of course, n is one for vacuum. N is very close to one for air, so we usually just use one for the index of refraction for air. You do not have to remember this, but the n for water is about 1.33. Now see if you can find the speed of light in water. So n is 1.33, which is c over v, three times ten to the eighth divided by v. So we'll get v to be 2.256 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. When light refracts, it follows the law of refraction: sine theta one over sine theta two equals to v one over v two. Because v equals to c over n, so we can replace v one with c over n one, and. V two with c over n two, and then we can cancel the c, and we get n two over n one. And then if we cross multiply, we get n one sine theta one equals to n two times sine theta two. And this is called the Snell's law. For light, we usually talk about the index of refraction of a medium instead of the speed of light in that medium. So for light, we usually use the Snell's law instead of the law of refraction in this format. It's still very useful for us to keep in mind that, that these equations tell us that when refraction happens, the angle is smaller for the medium in which the speed is slower, and slower speed means a bigger n. Now let's look at the refraction between water and air. Here we have a fish under water. When this light ray from the fish reaches the surface, part of the light would get reflected, part of the light would go through and get refracted. See if you can draw the refracted ray in air. When this ray goes from water into air, its speed increases. Therefore, the angle should increase. Because the angles are measured between the ray and the normal line, it would help if we draw the normal line. The angle increases; that means this light ray would bend this way. For an observer over here, he or she would think the ray comes from here. So the observer would see the image of the fish above the fish. This makes catching a fish in water tricky. Because when you aim at that fish image, you see you will miss because the real fish is below its image. This is also why if you stand in a pool and look down, your legs look shorter. And if you look at this straw in water, it looks bent. Now let's go back to the fish. Because the law of refraction or the Snell's law is symmetric for medium one and medium two, if I put two here and one there, the equation still holds. So light rays are retraceable. If a light ray travels from the fish to the person following this path, this light ray from the person would follow exactly the same path to the fish. This means when the fish looks at you. The fish would think you are up there instead of here. The fish would think you are taller than you really are. One more interesting thing about the path of the light ray is that this path happens to be the least time path between the fish and the person. It takes light less time to follow this bent path than even a straight path between the two. It's right that the straight line path. Involves shorter distance, but compared to the real path, there is more distance for light to travel when it is in the slower water. 
That's why the straight line path takes more time than the actual path of the light ray.